What's up everybody, Derek here, and today I am down at a new creek that I found. Uh, I fished way miles and miles downstream on this creek, and I didn't realize how far into San Antonio it actually went, but I feel like I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Of course, there's like some four-wheeler trails or something down through here, but it's labeled as a park on my Google Maps. But this is what it looks like. It's starting to pull up and kind of have little places where it still is flowing and then pulls up in those little spots, and there are fish everywhere. So it kind of stops right here and kind of stops it up so it gets deeper down through there, about two to three foot, but it's clear and it looks awesome. So I don't know what we're going to catch, if we're going to be using a rooster tail, maybe a helgramite, uh, maybe even like a quarter ounce spinnerbait. I have no idea, but I want to catch some fish and find out what lives in this creek. It's not that big, but that doesn't mean that there isn't big ones in here. So let's get to fishing. All right, I'm going to start right here. I do have a spinnerbait that I'll be having on handy that just in case I want to try it out, but we're going to try out this little Helgramite again. This thing is just always killer at finding fish and catching them with just a little, I believe that's a 132nd ounce jig head. No, I believe that's a 1 16th ounce jig head. It has a perfect fall rate, which is just, it, it actually kind of reminds me of a Senko, just a lot smaller profile, but let's see if we might be able to catch some fish down through here. There's little pockets all over the place. I don't know, it's not that deep down in there right there in front of me. We'll just have to see how it goes. Oh, there's a bass that just came out. There's a bass right there. Oh, is that thing gonna go right in front of me? Oh, that was a good sized bass hanging. Oh, there's fish everywhere down in there can almost sometimes work this thing like a turd, just like a Ned rig. There's bass down in there, I'm seeing them. Not huge ones, that one that came out of that brush pile was actually a good sized bass. Oh, we got something right there. What we got? Oh, that was a, that was a big old, uh, looked like a red ear, or not red ear, but a red breast maybe. Oh, we had something right there. Man, what was that? There are these little bitty holes. Like right down there under that tree. I mean, look at those fish. They're just attacking. As soon as it hits. Oh, that was a beautiful fish. Beautiful colored fish, whatever that was. I may have to downsize ultimately. Let's go to the other side of this tree where this little hole's at. It's just a cool looking little spot. Oh, man, they're just attacking it. As soon as I twitch it. Got that one. Oh, it came off. Dang it. Bring it up a little bit and then drop it down in there, right on top of him. Oh, I had one. Oh, is he still on there? Oh my gosh. I cannot hook these fish. Oh man, this is getting frustrating. All right, here's what I came up with. I've got a older bobber that I found that is, I didn't realize was a little melted from a plastic, but hey, I think it's gonna work just fine. I've got a smaller, older jig head. I'm kind of running out of my little bitty jig heads. I need to get stocked back up, but I've got this gulp stuff here that I've used once and I tore them up on cichlids and some other stuff. So what I'm gonna basically gonna do is try to cut off a straight little section and then that little curved part I'm gonna to try to put it get it straight by putting it on here and just running it up so it's kind of just almost like a jig basically just a 
just a tube jig for the most part with no flare i mean you could always flare it i mean you could slice this thing however you wanted to do it you know whatever but uh that's basically what i'm gonna do and i'm gonna see if these fish will maybe catch on to this so let me put this up oh yeah this is gonna be money spot let's see what happens here right off the current Oh, something's got it right. Oh, something had it right there. Right there. Oh, something got it right away. Oh, what'd we get? Finally got one. And it looks like it is a red breast. Finally. I knew that's probably what we were hooking earlier. Pretty fish. There's this little hole right here. I mean, it's not very big, but just a little hole. And there are fish over there. I can see them right here. So let's see what happens when I drop this right over in there. Immediately, what'd we get? Bass! I knew they were in here. I've been seeing them upstream or downstream when we started. Pretty little dude. Thanks, buddy. Well, that's cool. So, red breast and bass. Oh, man, that thing disappeared. Where did we get the, oh, wait, that's a good, whatever that is. Another red breast, yep. Here we go, we're starting to catch them. Thanks, bud. I mean, it's not the straightest job, but it's kind of got a little squir squirrely tail on it a little bit. So let's see if that even works like that. As soon as it hit the water. Oh, that is a pretty one. Pretty fish. Man. So it didn't matter if it wasn't straight. I mean, it's close, but I don't care. This is fun now. Oh, we got one right there. Oh, there's a cichlid. That's three species right there. These things act crazy. I can unhook him without and they got teeth if you can see those teeth little teeth crazy little fish let that current kind of take it man another cichlid Let go, buddy. Their mouths are so much harder to get a hook out of than a perch or any kind of sunfish. They're still fun to catch. They just, eh. I don't know why they're so much harder to, there, got him. Thanks, buddy. What'd we get? Little bitty one. Man, that's a deep hole. <laughs> that thing went way down there. A little bitty cichlid. Thanks, bud. But I can't believe how deep that hole is. It's got to be five, six foot deep right there. 
Oh, something came and smacked it. The bobber. What was that? Three casts? Three fish? That is one deep little hole right there. Well, I think I've caught enough fish and I've gone up far enough to kind of stop right here. I'm in shorts right now and it gets thick. If you see right through here, I mean, what I've been able to do is stay in the trees back here. If you see all these trees, the grass isn't growing real tall down through there so I can just walk and see the ground. But I'm not walking through all this thick stuff just to go up through little thick spots and get the chance of a rattler getting me with shorts on. So. I'm done at this point. I've caught quite a few and what's going to be awesome is as I've maybe put on some snake chaps and some other stuff and I can go back upstream, we can, I can just keep exploring and I can find these little holes. And there is one other person that told me he caught a 10 pound bass out of one of these holes. I don't know, do you guys believe that or not? But that's what he told me and he showed me the picture of it and the fish looked like it was 18, 20 inches long but weighed 10.4 pounds. So. Where the scale is wrong, I have no idea, but that fat, fat, fat bass that he showed me was definitely probably a 10 pounder, but let me know if you guys like hitting up little spots like this. I love little, little spots and some of the holes in them were just crazy deep. It just, the bobber would disappear and just be gone. So anyways, let me know what you guys say. Uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments, but thanks for watching you guys and subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next one.